Hi there. Well, today in the third edition of the Home Assistant Beginner's Guide, we're going to have a complete walk around of the Home Assistant dashboard so you can know where everything is sitting and what you need to click to go where. First item at the top here is this little toggle, just toggles these names on and off. Next we have the overview. So this is the default dashboard that Home Assistant has created. It's just pulling in each and every entity that it can find. Later on, we'll take control of these in the next episode when we talk more about dashboards. The other default dashboards that we get here are the map. The map basically creates a map and it positions you your home in the address that you set up when you first logged into Home Assistant. This is really useful because if you've got a, a mobile phone, for example, that you've connected to Home Assistant, it can start tracking you and creating automations based on your position. Next up, we've got the energy graph. I really like this. If you've got energy sensors within your home, it can start creating graphs for you, showing you amount of energy you're using and where it's going. Next up, we have the logbook. The logbook is really useful. This basically logs each and every activity that goes on within Home Assistant. So it's really good when you're trying to work out what's going on with something. You can have a look at the logbook and see the history. Next up, we've got history. Now history, as you can see, there's nothing showing at the moment. This is because we need to select a device. So let's select a device, for example, our present sensor, and there we can see We've got a history of when it's detecting pressure, presence, and when it's not. Um, the media entity, currently we don't have any media plays set up, but this is for, for example, playing music or streaming um, movies or whatever you want to do. That's the media entity. We'll get into that a little bit later in further episodes. We've then got to-do lists. This is where you can create things like shopping lists and other to-dos which can be used later as you get more into the system. Developer tools, now these are a little bit more sort of intermediate level, so I'm going to leave this for now. We'll get back to this in a later episode. Settings is one of the most useful tabs on Home Assistant. When we go into settings, you'll see that there's a whole lot of different things that we can go into, and we'll briefly look at each one of these. First one is the Home Assistant Cloud. Now, I would certainly recommend using the Home Assistant Cloud or otherwise known as Nabucasa. The beauty about this is that you're supporting the Home Assistant development team by paying them, I think it's something like $5 a month, and you get some really cool functionality for this. One of the main things is it gives you a secure way to log into your home automation system when you're out and about. Now, there are ways of doing this for free, but you really need to understand about how networking works or otherwise you could open up a pathway for someone to come into your home assistant and start messing around. Devices and services is made up of four components. First of all, we have integrations. So these are all the devices that it's already found on my network. And when you first set up Home Assistant, you may well find that there's a whole lot of smart home devices that you have been using before, perhaps with Alexa or other apps that show up immediately. Down the bottom here, we can see the ones that we've already configured, like for example, the Shelly and the Zigbee that we set up in the previous episode. The next item is devices. So if we look here, we've got, for example, our Shelly, we can drill down into that and we can see whole lot of information about that Shelly device that we brought in in the previous episode. We then have entities, so devices contain entities. So one device might have multiple entities. So as you can see here, we've got all sorts of different entities that are already available within Home Assistant before we even get started. Some of them have pulled in from devices that are in my home already but we'll talk more later about this. Then we've got helpers. Helpers are basically variables that you can take advantage of when you're creating automations. So you'll see there's a whole list of, of variables here. For example, things like buttons, drop-down lists, groups, um, stats, 
numbers, statistics, timers, all sorts of things. These are really useful. Next up, we've got our automations and scenes. We've already created one automation, so you've got a little bit of an idea. We will be going into much more detail about automations in a later episode. Now, scenes are designed for controlling things like lights. For example, we might say, if we're watching TV, we want certain lights in our living room to dim down or go to a certain color. So we can create a scene, we would add a scene and we would select the lights and then the color and the brightness settings for them. Scripts is another way of a sequence of actions that you can run from a dashboard. We'll discuss this further in later episodes. Blueprints are really handy. These are little pre-created automations that we can download from the blue, uh, blueprint list. We can go here, import blueprint, and basically we can search for blueprints that have been created by other Home Assistant users, and we can import them for free and use them within our Home Assistant. Um, next up, we've got areas, labels, and zones. So Home Assistant has recently really improved this area of the system. They allowing us to create areas. These are rooms in our house, for example. We've then got labels, so we can add labels to various entities and devices. And we can also select zones that we can, for example, be in a home zone on our maps. Add-ons, add-ons are really useful. These are like little programs that we can sideload into Home Assistant. For example, here you'll see that it's automatically loaded the Matter server, and this is what will allow us to communicate with Matter devices in our system. Dashboards, so these are the dashboards we talked about earlier. As you can see currently, we've got the overview, the energy, and the, mesh, uh, the map dashboard. These were created by default when we set up Home Assistant. Uh, voice assistants, you may already be using um, one of the voice assistants, Google or Amazon, and this is where you can set them up. Now, if you are using or paying for Nabucasa, they offer free integration into both of these two voice assistants. We also have the local control voice assistants that Home Assistant is busy developing as well. Tags. NFC tags are really useful. They can be used to trigger automations. Um, I do have a video that I can link to you showing you the tags, uh, use of tags in Home Assistant. People, this is the people that you're adding. So you can see there, I've got me as the owner of the system. I set that up when I created the system, but we can go and we can create additional persons within our home. We can give them a name, for example, and we can start giving them various access rights to the home automation system. The system option here is where we go to control our system. So for example, we've got general. So this is talking about time zones and things like currencies and countries, etc. cetera. Um, we've got updates. We'll talk later about updating the system. It will pop up a reminder when it's ready to update but we'll talk about that in a later episode. Um, repairs, Home Assistant is getting more and more clever as they carry on with development and it will start popping you up repairs, reminding you to fix things within Home Assistant. Logs, this is another way that you can use to diagnose issues with Home Assistant and see what's going on in the background. So really useful. Backups, a really important part of Home Assistant. We can create backups within Home Assistant manually, but a really good way of doing backups is to use the Google Backup Drive system so that it will actually record those backups and save them to your Google Drive. I can give you a link in the description to the Google Drives. Analytics, um, this is something that allows you to keep Home Assistant up to date and allow them to use your data to help them find bugs in the system. I always allow them to do this. I'm very comfortable with the Home Assistant team that they're not going to be using my data for anything nefarious at all. 
networking. So this is ways in which your home assistant is communicating with your local network, plus if it's communicating to the outside network, this is where you would set things up over here. Storage. Now you'll see currently uh, Home Assistant is using the storage just on the SD card that I've got plugged in. I would highly recommend connecting an external storage device such as an NVMe. I do have a, uh, a video showing you about that as well. Hardware, you can see that I'm running it on the Raspberry Pi 4 at the moment. There are all sorts of hardware devices that you can use. But for me, Home Assistant is really easy to set up on Raspberry Pi, and that's why I really recommend you starting off with Raspberry Pi when you're a beginner. Notifications. Um, this will show you a notification of items that pop up within Home Assistant. For example here, it's telling about us about devices or integrations that it's found on our network. Um, Simon down the bottom here, so this is my user. And as you see, I can go into my user and I can look and set up all sorts of things like date and time format, browser settings, etc. I can control all sorts of things for me as the user. So that's the basic. Um, we do have a search over here. That's a search across all of our entities. So we could type something in there or we can just scroll down. Um, we have our assist process. Um, we can talk more about assist in a later stage as well. And then we have edit, which is how we start editing our dashboards. So we're gonna be talking about editing dashboards in the next episode. So that's it for today's episode. I hope this has been useful and I look forward to catching up with you in the next one where we start looking at editing our dashboards. Thank you very much. Have a great one, bye for now.